So hi, one of the Good Noise Podcasts are here with Jordan from Kill the Lights. We're going to ask him some questions today. I'm going to start. So what inspired the creation of the band, and what does the band name mean? Um, what inspired the creation? Uh, it was a late night, and I got a text from Moose. Um, he said he was sitting around his house drinking a few bottles of wine. Mm-hmm. Um, right. After... I finished with my previous band, Still Remains. I still continued to be like a hobby songwriter. Um, so I had like 20 or 30 songs just sitting on my hard drive. Just basically, it was just, it's my getaway from the everyday life. And um, I sent Moose to songs. And the first song I sent him actually was um, The Faceless, was the first song that we actually That's released. Fuck, so hard. I love that song. Yeah, yeah that's, that's like that song's like 13 years old. Damn. I, wow. I, you know, yeah, I wrote that in 2007 or 8. Okay. Wow. Damn. Jesus. Yeah. It's just been rotting. And then, can you tell me what the band name means? Um, truth be told, I didn't come up with it. Okay. Okay. Um, we had a list of about 30 names, and it just boiled down to kill the light. What's okay. Funny? a lot of references to there's a band with a song called kill the lights or it's in their lyrics or something mm-hmm. um i would never heard it um but there's and there's some country band with a song called kill the lights apparently oh <laughs> you guys should uh, collaborate that'd be uh, I'll pass. <laughs> I'll pass. Right. Okay. yeah probably for the best all right yeah, yeah. Yeah. So congrats on your newest release, The Singer. How do you feel about the responses to the single so far and uh, to the album for the people you've already shown it to? Great, great. Yeah, I mean, um, I haven't shown the album to anyone. Um, okay. Um, but as far as the singles, I mean, we, we are beyond excited for a band that's uh, never played a show. Um, I'd say um, the success is doing, you know, we're doing well. Um, it's it's interesting because i mean before i came from you know playing 200 300 shows a year um and that's how you promote it but now these days it's just obviously online um and it's great i mean our first single that we released on our own um it's been streamed over half a million times wow and that's on that's by ourselves that's before we signed our contract with fearless so um i'm excited a week from tomorrow it comes out so yeah um, oh, congrats. So speaking of Fearless, can you tell me how that happened? How you guys got picked up by them? Um, well, we were in the talks with a bunch of different labels. Um, our manager, Ryan, um, he was exchanging some emails with uh, some people at the label and kind of just casually uh, name dropped us and sent them the faceless. Um, and they seemed the most excited about it more than anything. Um, since we self-funded the entire record, you know, we paid for the first video, uh, paid for the recording. We weren't really looking for money. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. All we wanted was a solid team, and Fearless definitely seemed to have the most excitement and enthusiasm about the band. Okay. Very okay. Cool. Sick. Um, so can you tell me a little, bit, a little bit about your writing process for that record? I know you said you've had these songs for going back 10 plus years, so. Yeah. 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 Um, there was a bunch of the songs that I had logged. Um, obviously, we changed them once Moose got involved, once James and Travis got involved. Um, but we took we took uh, kind of the best of the roster of my previous material, and then um, the few times that James and Moose they actually flew to Grand Rapids, Michigan, which is where my hometown is, um, to stay with me, and we wrote like six songs in a weekend. Wow. Yeah, uh, there's one of the songs on the record, The Enemy. Um, I'm not sure if y'all have been sent a promo of it yet. Yeah, we were. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we've we wrote that song in about 15 minutes. Holy shit! What? <laughs> Wait, we had, okay. Uh, we had a late night of drinking, as it should be, you know, because uh, I've known Moose for I don't know 15 years now. Um, so we had a late night late night of drinking, and uh, I woke up. Moose was still sleeping. I grabbed my guitar, um, I plugged it into my recording rig, and started playing the opening riff just out of nowhere. All of a sudden, Moose uh, steps into the room, and you know his hair is all gnarled, his face is all smashed in from 
you know, being passed out for 12 hours straight and <laughs> yeah. finish the song like minutes later. Damn, that's crazy. Wow. Is that common for you guys to finish a song that fast? Or is that uh, like a one-time thing? It's not, it's not a one-time thing, but usually um, the hardest part of writing music for me is starting with getting the idea. Mm -hmm. uh, as soon as you have that riff, you like the opening riff in that song. As soon as I have that riff, the song writes itself. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't even know if that makes sense. It's just the vibes there. Everything sounds good. Every, you know, like the feeling's right. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Understandable. So where was your headspace while writing that album? Um, To have fun. That's where my headspace was. Um, all of us have been in bands full time um, for a living. Mm -hmm. uh, once once it, it, you know, it gets serious and you're trying to not only have fun, but make money and make a career out of it. You know, you, you lose um, a massive aspect of your band. So this time around, that's why we didn't want, you know, we've wrote and recorded a few songs and we didn't want labels involved. We didn't want a manager involved. We wanted to simply have fun, mm -hmm. write, write some metal songs like we did when we were 18. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so can you tell me a little bit about the name for the album, The Center? Is there any sort of like meaning behind that? Yeah, um, it's definitely a good James question because I didn't write all the lyrics. Um, but it's the whole thing. He writes a lot of dark lyrics. Like he'll write a song and I'll call a guy and say, you know, are you okay? You good? You good <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, the whole thing is that we're all sinners. Whether you're, uh, whether you believe in anything or not, I don't care if you do or you don't. Um, we all, we're all sinners and we all have that demon inside of us. Um, Okay. 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 So the sinner is the listener then. Correct. That's okay. Out okay. For everyone. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah. We even have this cheesy things where we call our fans the sinners, our sinners. Oh, that's cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty cool. So, what bands or artists influence do you think you can hear on this record? Um. Shoot. For me, I mean, I'm I'm big into you know the. Gothenburg, Swedish metal sounds, you know, in flames, soil work at the gates. Um, you know, also I listen to the faceless and I hear Iron Maiden in that chorus. Um, and Moose's drums, there's a lot of Judas Priest. Priest is one of his favorite band. Um, so yeah, I mean, we, we, our taste varies a lot. I mean, one of my favorite bands is Rancid. So <laughs> I try to influence, I try to put in as much punk and European metal as possible, but I, I don't know if you really hear it that much on the record. I can in certain songs, but. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so what song on the record took the longest to write? I know you said once again, you had some of these 10 plus um, years. Probably. Through the night. Okay. Through the night. Um, for me personally. Yeah. Originally I just had it as an acoustic song. Mm -hmm. um, and then. Once the guys heard the demo, we decided to kind of transpose it to a full band song. Um, so actually, we just re we just recorded an acoustic version of Through the Night. I think there's some sort of special. Uh, if you order the album, you get the acoustic version of the song. Yeah, it was like pre-save or something. I just did it. You know more than I do, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what you're going to hear um, with that pre-save, that's originally what the song was. Okay. All right. Very cool. Sick. So is there a certain feeling you're shooting for your listeners to have while they're listening to the album? Certain feeling. Yeah. Um, hopefully excitement. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm not the type of person that wants anyone to get into a uh, dark, distraught place. So I hope it, uh, you know, excitement. Um, I hope whatever age, I hope it makes them feel like they want to get into a mosh, but again, whether they're 16 or they're 46, you know, it's, um, to have that young energy again. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, so how did you choose the opener and closer for the album? Were they written that way or did it fall that way? No, no, no it was, uh, that's kind of hard actually, because then you have um, not only four members um, influence on how the album should flow. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked to Colin Richardson and Chris Clancy, who co-produced the record. Um, we thought um this the organ intro for the record um 
uh, would just set the tone. I actually had organ on a few more songs, a few more of the songs on the record, but they just didn't quite make the mix. Um, so I kind of wanted the album to have kind of almost like a gothic kind of vibe. Um, um, and then the outro, uh, we kind of liked, we, there was a, we were debating on having the last song on the album um, as the intro. So we kind of wanted the outro of the album to also feel like the intro, if that makes any sense. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, sick. So you guys are going on a UK 2021 tour. What can fans expect from your live performance? Um, a lot of energy and a lot of fun. Um, the practices that we have had, um, I mean, we're just gid giddy as kids. You know, it's, I can't, I, it's hard to even believe, believe that we're about to put out a record and haven't ever played a show. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we're going to be up there like a bunch of 16 year old kids, you know, screaming every word right along with the fans. Um, I've heard ticket sales are doing well. Uh, we've intentionally booked um, small rooms um, because we want it to feel more of like a punk rock vibe, you know, everyone in each other's faces. Yeah. Um, you know, the stage is barely off the ground type thing. Yeah. Um, so God willing, that tour will happen. So mm -hmm. continue to buy tickets uh, and uh, we'll hopefully all be sweating in each other's faces. All right. Come on. Um, so I know nothing else to announce, but are there at least other tour plans for 2021? Yeah, there, there are, but none of it's confirmed, so I, I don't want to jump the gun and say anything. Um, right. We're confirmed for Download Festival. That's cool. Um, that was canceled this past year, so we'll for sure be um, back in England playing Download. Um, there's some other fun talks, but All right. just, how about just look forward to it for now? Okay. okay. I'm just trying to see you guys in the U.S., so... That's all. Oh, I know. Well, trust me. There's a lot of talk about it. It's not a lot being booked right now. Okay. Yeah, I get okay. that. That's fair. So That's fair. I have a feeling um, once it's PC, um, it's going to open like a floodgate. Yeah. And mm -hmm. every and any band is going to be out on tour. Um, I know I'm going to go to every single show that comes through town once it's you oh, know, yeah. day two again. Definitely. Um, so what are your top three songs that you're looking forward to playing live off the album? Um, I would say the enemy. That's probably my personally my favorite track. Just I think just how it came together. Um, through the night because it's a different feel. Um, my last band was more. We didn't have any songs um, like it at all. Um, and I think shed my skin probably. Oh, all right. And really, I, I mean, I'm stoked in this record. I mean, I I'd say all of them, but. Mm -hmm. Boil it down to three. Those are the top three. Okay. All right. Awesome. So, where do you see the band in the next five years? We're uh, headlining Download Festival. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> definitely. Avenged Sevenfold and God willing Metallica, if they're still around. Um, and all of us just still having just as much fun as we are having with it now. Mm -hmm. I mean, the last thing I want to do is have this thing turn into just another job. Yeah. Have I just want to be the 18 year old kid having fun playing guitar for the rest of my life. All right. Very wholesome. Yeah. Very uh, wholesome. So for the last couple of questions, we're going to shift away from music and go straight to death row. So if you're on death row, what would your last meal be with a drink? <laughs> oh, Oh, definitely. Uh, Jameson on ice. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is going to sound funny because it's my birthday meal. And my wife makes me homemade fried chicken and mashed potatoes. Right. Oh, that's so, so awesome. I'd call her and say, Can I have my fried chicken, please? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so, if you could live in a fictional world for a week, where would you live? In where? In Where's a that? fictional world. Oh, I think it would be, uh, ooh, um, that is a hard one. Mm -hmm. um, Bag End? Lord of the Ring? Oh, Lord of the Ring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. I, yeah. All right. And uh, I have the honor of asking the last question, and everyone we've spoken to has the most important question. What is your favorite color? Uh, is black considered? Yeah. Yes. That's definitely. That's that's all. It's all I own. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's um, fair, that's fair. So as I said, that's all the questions we have today. Is there anything you'd like to plug? Um, Christopher Clancy, incredible producer, Colin Richardson, incredible producer, 
uh, check out the center coming August 21st. Hell yeah. All right. Well, thank you for sitting down with us. This has been Jordan from Kill the Lights and we're the Good Noise Podcast.